Hi, this is Prashil, and you're listening to the Equity Masters Stock Market Wrap Up. In today's edition, I'll be taking you through what moved the markets over the week. So let's jump right in. Inflation hits a seven month high. Auto sales are slowing down. What's next in store for Jet Airways and Yes Bank? Let's look at the economy first. According to government data, Retail inflation touched a 7-month high of 3.05% in May 2019. The previous high was in October 2018, when retail inflation was recorded at 3.38%. Higher vegetable and food prices led to the fourth consecutive monthly increase in retail inflation, which is calculated on the basis of the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. As per the data, Inflation in the food basket increased to 1.83% in May, as compared to 1.1% in April. The retail inflation for April 2019 was revised upwards to 2.99% from the earlier 2.92%. The retail inflation level in May 2018 was recorded at 4.87%. Note that the Reserve Bank of India has set the targets of 4% for the inflation rate. The Monetary Policy Committee of the RBI factors in the CPI-based retail inflation while finalizing its monetary policy. On the other side, the Index of Industrial Production, which is an indicator of manufacturing activity, grew by 3.4% in April 2019 as compared to the levels in April 2018. The rise was mainly due to better performance by mining and power generation segments. In terms of industries, 14 out of the 23 industry groups in the manufacturing sector showed positive growth as compared to the same period last year. Moving on to news from the automobile sector, domestic passenger vehicle sales declined 20.6% in May, domestic car sales were down 26.1%, and motorcycle sales last month declined 4.9%. Meanwhile, the total two-wheeler sales in May 2019 declined by 6.7%. Vehicle sales across categories registered a decline of 8.6% to 20,86,358 units. Speaking of automobile stocks, one thing we must keep in mind that not all auto companies will make money over time. And also, you shouldn't stay away from auto stocks altogether. Even Tanushree Banerjee, the co-head of research here at Equity Master, believes that there are businesses in this sector that you cannot ignore. She's particularly talking about the blue chip auto stocks. She believes that this could be the opportunity that the long-term investors have been waiting for. It may be worth your while to take a closer look at the auto sector. Moving on to news from the aviation space, Jet Airways was in focus again as stock exchanges decide to impose trading restrictions on the debt-laden airline. According to a circular issued by the National Stock Exchange, NSE, the shares of the airline will be shifted from rolling segment to trade-for-trade segment, wherein the settlement in the script will take place on gross basis with 100% upfront margin and a 5% price band. Trading in the futures and option segment of the exchanges will also be stopped. The exchanges also cited the company's failure to submit financial results for the year ended 31st March as well as observations made by its auditors as reasons for its decisions. Several people from the top management have left the company in the past few months. Lenders to the cash-trapped airline led by the State Bank of India are seeking investors to recover their dues. The airline's total liability, including unpaid salaries and vendor dues, is nearly 150 billion rupees. In the case that Jet Airways is admitted to the National Company Law Tribunal under bankruptcy resolution, lenders may recover only a fraction of the 84 billion rupees that the airline owes them. With news of potential investors shying away from investing in the airline, it will be very interesting to see where the airline goes from now. Moving on to news from the banking sector, Yes Bank was in focus in the week gone by. The stock of the private lender witnessed maximum selling pressure after foreign brokerage firm UBS cut its target price for the bank. As per an article in the Economic Times, the brokerage has maintained its sell rating on the stock as it expects more asset quality pressures than consensus. 
given the bank's high exposure to stressed corporates and low recognition of these loans as gross non-performing loans. UBS says that a sustained economic slowdown could impact the banking and finance sector on several fronts, including a slowdown in loans and higher non-performing loan risks, while affecting fee income and exerting pressure on the net interest margin of banks. The selling in Yes Bank is also seen as the lender's board in its AGM avoided shareholder queries on Rana Kapoor's future at the bank. The bank issued a clarification to stock exchanges denying reports that suggested founder Rana Kapoor demanded a board seat and compensation that triggered directorial exits by independent members earlier in the week. Earlier in the week, ratings agency Moody's also placed the bank's ratings under review for a downgrade. The agency placed Yes Bank's ratings under review for a downgrade, citing its large exposure to debt-laden non-banking financial companies and the possibility that the bank's loans under watch list could slip into the non-performing asset segment. Meanwhile, Mukesh Sabarwal, the chairman of the Nomination and Remuneration Committee of the bank, quit on Tuesday, citing personal reasons. Earlier, domestic ratings agency ICRA had downgraded Yes Bank's Tier 1 and Tier 2 bonds and infrastructure debt on deterioration in the credit quality of large ticket borrowers. With a host of problems facing the bank, we will have to wait and watch to see where these beaten down market darlings go from here. Well, that's all from us today. Before signing off, we would like to know if you like a podcast. Is there anything specific you would like us to cover? We would love your feedback. Just visit equitymaster.com and drop us a line. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and happy investing.